Hello, greetings. Sherlock Father here. I was requested by exactly one person to do a Way of the Samurai tutorial because apparently there's not very much tutorials on YouTube about this game. This is from like 2000, 2001. I even tried to look up to help myself. I struggled, and I couldn't find it, 2002. I struggled very, very much so when I played this game. Um, I do not know if this is the memory card that has data. It doesn't matter. This is a rough tutorial. It is. Awesome. So, when you start fresh in this game, you are at a very big disadvantage in a lot of ways. In this tutorial, I aim to cover m some mechanical stuff and as well as story progression, other things like that. Yeah, I may leave something out. I'll give some tips as I go. I'm very tired. Um, so at the beginning of the game, it will not tell you anything. It will not give you any sense of direction. This is your first choice. You are already free to begin deciding things. The game is broken up into two days. Day, night, day, night. After that, no matter what you have done, whether you had any input in, it, in the game at all or not, it will end, and you will get an ending based off what your actions have been and if you were able to meet the resolution and requirements of such ending. I have not gotten all the endings so far, but I think I understand a good idea. This game is broken up into different factions, and depending on how you align with these different factions, should you choose to, or also should you choose not to interact or align with them, which is the beauty of this game, will affect different aspects of the story and how it all plays out. Everything is set pieces, so everything that plays out will play out as it's supposed to all the time without fail. However, depending on how you alter that, it will affect it in other ways. The game is never random. It is all how it's all predetermined based on well, it's not predetermined from the start, but it's predetermined in a way based off what you do, it will always happen. As a result, you did this, I did that. So we start here, and we have some choices here. Now mechanically, um, we'll get into combat in a second here. You do not have to interact with these people. Actually, if you do not, it will not affect the story in any way. A lot of this is optional. This is, in a way, a trap. So she says, please help. So get out of my way. You press circle to initiate an interaction with people. Depending on what you say, it can affect things. If you ask to join, he'll throw you on the railroad tracks, and then you'll have be able... It's a shortcut in a way to be able to join another faction if you want. But uh, let's just say she doesn't seem to like you. He says, fight us, and you will surely die. So I'm going to pull my sword out. When you walk around with people with your sword pulled out, it can provoke aggression because, well, you're walking around with your weapon out. Once we're in combat, it will lock onto opponents. You will only ever fight one at a time. Enemies will not gang up on you, but sometimes you can get hit by action by other enemies. If you hit other enemies, then it will then change the aggression to them. So while you're in this, press R2 to freely run. This gives you better mobility instead of being locked around. It also lets you just have more overall freedom of movement, as well as uh, give you the ability to switch targets. Now, in this game, you have two different attacks. You have light and heavy attacks. Light attacks are done with square. You always have a basic three-hit combo. Triangle attacks are heavy hits. You have different combos, of course, as well. The other thing that makes it different is depending on what arrow key you use, so for example, arrow key on the D-pad, so if I use the right, it does that. If I use left, it stabs. Back plus that is different, and forward plus that does that. The way you learn new moves is by doing different forms of things with different styles of swords. There's different styles of swords in this game. You always start with a sword that's middle stance, but there's high and low, of course. And they fight different, respectively. So... Advanced mechanics. When you're fighting, enemies will block. There's two things you can do. Well, three, but the main one is... Let's see if he blocks. He does not. Well, he got hit by accident, so he'll provoke the fight with him. So, did you see that and how his sword was put up when I pushed? Whenever an enemy blocks, if you wish to attempt to push them, you press forward plus attack. To parry, well not forward, you press into the opponent, wherever they're facing. So. He went for a parry, which if you go for a push, it will counter a parry. So. To do a parry, or to attempt a parry, wait till they block.
and press back. If he were to have attacked or attempted to push, I would have gotten a parry. However, because he didn't, I have a recovery, so he could have hit me in that moment. So remember, to push, it's at the opponent, plus attack. To parry, it's away. The most important move in the game is hold R1 to block and press square. It's the kick. You can't block it, it does a little bit of damage, and if worse comes to worse, you can get any enemy in the corner almost in the game, and you can kick them anywhere from 5 to, I'd say, 20 times for their whole life bar. But an idea in practice, this is how you should this is how you should kind of be fighting. So whenever you fail to uh, whenever you get parried, you can dodge, which basically means you push in a direction. Every move is different in terms of how you want to dodge it. So for example, if it's a stab, you want to dodge through, you know, the side. If it's some kind of slash, you're going to want to dodge to the right area of it. You have jump attacks. The jump plus triangle is one of the most effective attacks in the game. If they, even if they force to block it, they will just basically give you your turn. See how I dodged that there? I just double tapped in the direction I wanted to move around him. Whenever your health gets to a certain low point, your character will randomly stagger and drop to one knee. It is rough to deal with, trust me. A way you can avoid that is to constantly attack, and I mean constantly, but you run the risk of getting parried when you attempt to push. You'll notice I barely do any damage against this guy. It's because we started from the beginning with the basic sword. I'm going to show you what the game wants you to do, and essentially... This game is kind of hard to explain. So we got over the mechanical part. That's push and parry. Sorry, I, I'm extremely tired. This is the most useless tutorial probably imaginable. I even died to the guy I was trying to teach you how to play the game to. Easy, normal, and hard all for nothing different within the game besides difficulty, of course. Like health and damage and all that. Um, This is awful. I, I apologize for providing this awful of, of, of a thing, but I hope I'm helping in some way, shape, or form. So... You start with very little money, and it's hard to make money in this game. And what they don't really tell you is that, I'll be honest with you, most likely in your first playthrough with a shit sword, even if you find better swords and upgrade it a bit, you might not even be able to beat the guy at the very end, especially if you go against the, fight against the military and fight the general himself kind of thing. So the quickest way I find to make money... goes like this. Because what you can do is you can go to the uh, swordsmith and he'll upgrade your sword, but you can also pay a fee to what's called Deliver It. Your first playthrough, you want to generate as much money as possible, upgrade a sword's attack power as much as possible, and then have enough left for the delivery fee, so that way you can give it to the next playthrough that you have over, and then you have an overpowered sword. Just don't die, which is a problem, because then, well, you can hit more than one enemy at once. Note that if you hit two enemies at the same time, it will double the sword degradation. So if you hit two enemies with a heavy attack, you can sometimes just break your sword. Usually I like to go for the stab so I can learn the stab and kick. It's a very, very good move. Something I like to do is space. Oh, wow. Shit. Is space and go for a stab. If you hit an enemy from the back, he can never parry you. Remember that. Camp over dead bodies because enemies can trip whenever going backwards. So sometimes they can cause enemies to trip over them. Be aware you can as well. Just like that, see? When you're on the ground, if you, if you mash square, you'll never get up, but you can keep kicking. It does a little bit of damage. So it's usually good in case they, don't, if they can't get you back up. Just keep doing this. Go for a push. Don't spam pushes because they'll get used to it. Just throw them in every once in a while. Be slow and methodical about it and then just spam the kick. Abuse him sometimes. So this is the quickest way I find to make money. You don't even have to necessarily do this with this guy if you don't want. I'm just showing you basic combat of what you're supposed to do. I recommend attempting more pushes than parries, but it's whatever you want to do. So... I'm going to go show you 
So now he told us, oh, go to the Kuro's residence to this. Like I said, this doesn't matter. You're still free to decide. And at most points in the game, you can pivot, but there's certain points it becomes too late. So keep in mind if you need health, look out for these because they replenish every time. These are radish gardens. You can pick up items by kicking them on the ground, and you'll pick it up and eat it. Radishes always do 300 health, and if you come back to this area, it'll be there. Also, in the middle of a fight, if you're feeling stressed out, run back to that area and heal. The game will never tell you that, but it's a good thing to note, and it's important to remember. So the next thing I like to do to generate money is run up here. And there's other little secret ways to generate money, but I go for the most effective route. Time does not progress until you do a certain amount of things. You cannot do every possible event within one day. You must choose what you do and meet who you want to meet when, with, and when. This hut is important. This, this hut is very important. This is the most important thing in the game. Dojima the Swordsmith is what's going to make you this game playable. Because if you just keep running through... Uh, with the basic starting sword, you'll never get anywhere in this game. So you saw my life decrease by 50. You can eat mushrooms, too. They have a random chance to decrease your life or increase your life by certain amounts, like two, 500, and something else. A mushroom can never kill you, but be aware that in combat, it's always a risk because you could easily take a mushroom, it drops you to one health point, and then you get hit by a sword. So just be aware mushrooms are best eaten outside of combat, unless absolutely necessary. So, you want to have your sword worked on. Now, you can do different qualities of this. This is my honest opinion. Defense does not matter in this game. You either want to make it tougher to improve the durability of it, or you want to improve it. He's going to ask, what do you want to improve? Never pick flexibility. It decreases the damage for defense more often. It costs 6 yen, however, so we don't have it. Do not ask this guy to do something for you and then not pay him. He will attack you, and you'll have to kill him, and he'll be inactive for the rest of the playthrough. You will receive the upgrade, though. Go up through this pass, and that's where the Kuro Resident is. I hate the Kuro Residents. However, that being said, they are the quintessential way to make money in this game without beyond a reasonable doubt. I'm sorry, I forgot. Specifically, this one way to make a lot of money. And then after this, I'll show you basic tips on how to fight Shiratoko because... I understand he is the absolute worst thing in this game to fight sometimes. One of the most annoying enemies, very hard to read, very fast. Actually, I won't even have to show you because you get to spar with him here. So, this is the best way to make money in the game. The better you do in this sparring training match, the more money you get. The most I've ever received is 50, the least I've ever received is 7. These, th it makes sense. This is the wealthiest family in the game, so that's where all the money is going to be. So, they're going to talk here. The best way to quickly go through this is say, to, uh, try me now. So, they're going to have you fight Shiratoko. Shiratoko will usually parry you if you try to push him. I'm going to show you a new strategy. It's called No Parry, No Push. So he'll always let you get the first hit. So run up, stab him, boot him down. Pressure him with the jump. Slash, slash, slash. Slash, slash, slash. I didn't parry. He attempted one. What a dummy. Because I, it's low damage, but I'm not risking... That move's annoying. But you saw I didn't attempt the... Damn it. So... Shiratoko, if that doesn't work for you, I recommend spacing and stabbing. Because he's going to be very evasive and he has that annoying hand thing where he'll throw something at you. Or that stab he does. So bait for him to do something. Stab him, he threw a kick out, and then do it. One, two, three, don't do anything. Back up. With Shiratoko, you want to respect his space. As egotistical and arrogant as this fool is, you have to respect his space. That stab is annoying. Haven't attempted in a while.
When in doubt, kick him. Man. I'm not showcasing this very well at all. I'm just kind of getting bullied by Shirotoko. If you spam a stab, then... Oh my goodness. If you spam stab, then... They will always keep blocking it after. I just died to Shirotoko in the tutorial video trying to teach you how to deal with it. I almost don't even want to upload this at this point because I feel like a fucking embarrassment, but it's fine. I'll try it again, I suppose. You can shortcut it by just running straight for the area if you want. Um, let, me, let me try to show you what I mean. To actually put it into fucking practice. Shirotoko's annoying, but basically just respect his space, throw out a stab kick every once in a while. You can attempt the 1-2-3, I don't recommend pushing or trying to parry against him very much. Fight these guys just merely to upgrade your combo so you can unlock the stab kick. Wow, I'm really bad at this game. I kind of just want to go to bed. And... I'm really just at a point where I kind of just want to give up on YouTube, to be real. Sorry to turn the video into this, but it's just it's just getting to a point where I, I don't have time to play video games anymore. I just don't really have a big desire to. I'm not very good at them anymore anyway because I'm too fucking tired. kind of at a point where I just, I don't know, what's the point of any of it, right? But, yeah, but I just, I don't know. Let me go try to fight Shirotoko so I can show you what I mean. Yeah, you saw how I came back to that area after those guys were there. Some time had advanced after that. So if you go back to that area within a time frame, you'll see them. If you go there too late within this day, then the government official won't be there and you'll have to meet them later. So you kind of have to play around with this game. And as you go through different playthroughs and you want to see different things, just go to areas you don't usually go to within the first day or something. Mix it up essentially. But after a while, you'll learn how all these characters are interlinked, so once you get knowledge of, like, who's the undercover agent, who to look out for, you can kind of start manipulating the events into how you want them very easily. I'll show you, um, hopefully, what you're supposed to do against Shirotoko. So remember, the first attack is always free, so you may as well just stab kick him down. Pressure him before he gets back up.
I like to attempt it every once in a while. Just press... I usually double tap up or left or right, wherever I want to go. If he starts doing that dumb stuff, just... Walk away, chill for a bit. If you're in a corner, sometimes the enemy will kick back. If they kick back, you don't want to deal with that. If you're having trouble in this fight, run out of bounds and it'll reset you both to neutral in the middle. So if he's pressuring you too much, just be like, oh, I'm going to run away. See, spaced him out, respected his space, but he's an idiot. And even when you respect his space, he's going to try to do things. And that's how you... That was half a life bar, but I could have... Not saying, oh, I could have done it without getting hit, but... That's kind of how you want to go about that with Shiratoko. You want to bully his AI. You want to respect his space. Then you want to bully his AI again. Throw in three kicks. Don't do the method of no parry. No, no push, no parry. And then you'll get a fat payment if you don't take any damage. I don't know what makes it the random amount that it does. I don't know if it's time equal with whatever. But 39 yen is insane plus the five we have. So now I'm going to show you what to do to set you up for the next playthrough. Because, like I said, if you try to go through the whole game on your first playthrough with the with the crap starting sword and you just upgrade it a few times, I'm not saying you won't win. I'm just saying that it's not going to be as effective as you want it to be. You need a strong sword that can kill bigger enemies like Shiratoko in a few hits. You don't want to keep whittling him down. He, he can kill you in only a few. Late game, you're going to be fighting against so many enemies with such limited healing items in the vicinity, it's not even funny. So, now that we have 44 yen, we're going to go back to the smithing hut. Always remind yourself what the delivery fee is first because you know you want to have enough for him to be able to do it. <sighs> Apparently, you can't do it if it's your only sword, but okay, so pick up another crappy dull sword. Normal dumb enemies, you can usually just spam the free hit attack and they won't really know what to do. Sometimes enemies can have named weapons. It's nice if they do. Sometimes. Five yen to deliver. So you basically what you want to do is have your sword work on. Yes, please. Improved sharpness. Yes, please. Rinse, lather, repeat that over and over and over again until you only have five left to send it off. And then at the beginning of your next playthrough, scroll all the way down to the bottom where you see the name of the sword and you'll be able to select the next one. That's the main way to progress in this game. Sorry this tutorial was long-winded and terrible and I even didn't showcase a lot of good things, but oh well. Hey, there you go. Hope you had fun.